So, Big Run just happened five times over the course of a year. You may not know, but I've been wanting to make this video ever since the first big run, but just never got around to doing it. But the good thing is, is that since there have been more big runs since the first one, it gave me more opportunities to try the mode out and for Nintendo to make changes. Bad changes in some cases, but still. And it also means I'll have to do less speculation about the future of the mode because in my original plan for this video, I was speculating a lot. Now for the section of the video that was originally going to be speculation is mostly just full of things that I wish could happen. But I know will not. And what I mean by this is after this intro, I'm gonna talk about my general thoughts on this mode and what we actually got. Then I'm gonna talk about some cool ideas I have for the mode and what I wish we had gotten. So anyways, let's get started. Hello there everyone, my name is ZachAttack12 and I'm going to be talking a lot about what I feel about Big Run. I'm just going to get the most recent change out of the way and say it's garbage, it's terrible, it sucks. Seriously, the main reason why people kept grinding for Big Run high scores was to get the gold trophy. But for the last Big Run, because it was so easy to get the gold badge now, especially considering they made the limit for it only 135, most people just stopped playing Big Run after they got that high score, including myself. Now sure, you could grind scales for the rest of the big run, but grinding for scales isn't as exciting as getting a high score. And speaking of scales, for the sizzle season big run, Nintendo added the scale doubler attribute of big runs, which is literally just putting a band-aid on the already horrible scale drops that is a normal salmon run. And I feel like they only did this because the big run on Undertow didn't really have much going for it other than the double scales, and both King Salmonids can spawn. What I mean by it didn't have much going for it is like, for example, the first big run had Kohazuna as basically the featured boss. Same thing with the Inkblot big run in Horaboros. Same with the Barnacle and Dime big run with Joe. Hell, even the Umami big run had the Grizzco dualies. But the Undertow big run had nothing really unique about it. I'm gonna get into this later when I talk about what I really wanted for big run, but at the start, there was very little separating big run from regular salmon run. Or at least it felt like it at the start. Now I'm not going to talk about extra work at all, considering that's a separate event. However, prior to 6.0, it was kind of like a more competitive version of Big Run. What I mean by this is Big Run kind of felt like the first time Nintendo ever acknowledged the overfishing community. And this kind of ties into how I originally felt when I first heard that Big Run wasn't going to be a win or lose situation. What I mean by this is I was originally hoping that Big Run would actually have implications in-game, where if you lose the Big Run, the Salmonids keep the map, and it stays in the normal Salmon Run rotation. But the whole getting in the top 5% thing actually made Big Run a lot more exciting than I thought it was going to be until Nintendo ruined it. Now I'm going to go into a bit more detail about what I actually wanted from Big Run originally and some ideas. So like I mentioned before, I was actually hoping that Big Run would be a win or lose situation. Or by some kind of metric, whether it be the number of golden eggs collected across the world, number of waves won, or whatever, that if you met that criteria, you would win the Big Run. And that map would stay in the normal map rotation, but if you did not meet that criteria, the map would be given to the Salmonids and would be put in the normal Salmon Run rotation. I understand that the main problem with this is that some people are going to try to throw the big run so that they don't have to play their least favorite map anymore, which in the case of Umami, Undertow, or Wahoo World is a lot of people. What I did notice is that in the original clip of Big Run in the Splatoon 3 Direct, did not show the skybox that we currently have for big runs. It showed what looked like the King Salmonid skybox. It seems like connecting it with that prophecy that was mentioned in the Sunken Scrolls of Splatoon 2 was a last minute decision. I was also hoping that the pink looking skybox would be affecting all other maps in the normal map rotation. It just wouldn't affect anything like the music or gameplay. I was also hoping that the rigs would actually be above the map directly because I think that would look cool. Another more recent thing that I was hoping for was for each big run to have its own King Salmonid. For example, Walking World had Koizuna, Inkblot had Horoboros, and Barnacle had Joe. But Undertow and Umami didn't really have their own King Salmonid, because no new King Salmonid were added in those seasons. And this idea of each big run having its own King Salmonid would tie into another idea I have later. Speaking of those ideas... Another thing I wanted was for all the special waves to be used, and not just some of them. So now I'm going to talk about how I would do that. 
Okay, so for each map, the beacons are going to represent where the baskets are, and the ink splotches are going to represent where the spawning gushers are. Speaking of gushers, this is where I would place the gushers for Goldie Seeking and by extension, Mudmouths. Now you may notice that all of them are in or around mid, and some of them are in places where low tide would be, and that's because I think Goldie Seeking and Mudmouths on Wahoo World specifically would work best in mid. Another problem is that some of these gushers are on platforms that can only be gotten to by swimming up a wall, and not by walking. The simple solution is that Goldies will only spawn there and never travel to there after being forced out of the gusher. Or they could just jump. But what about Kohawk Cannons? Well, that would actually be done on mid-tide closer to spawn. Because of the more asymmetric nature of mid-tide, I think it will work best with cannons. The left cannon would be pointed essentially directly at the left spawning gusher. The right one would have a bit of a blind spot due to this wall, but would be able to hit the other two major spawning areas, and the furthest back cannon would essentially be right at spawn, but offset a little from the basket so that it doesn't get blocked by it. Now for Tornado. You're always going to have to bring the eggs to the basket that's closest to the spawn, even though on Wahoo World both low tide and high tide have the same basket. Now instead of putting the chest full of eggs right next to the spawning gushers on the other side of the map, I think it would be best to put them somewhere around mid mainly so that the journey taking them to the basket isn't too long. Now on Inkblot, just like before, the beacons are the baskets and the ink splashes are spawning gushers. Here is where I would put the gushers and mud mouths, and here is what I would want them to do with the cannons. The left and right cannons are mostly self-explanatory, but the back cannon, I think it would be really cool if they had it so that you could swim up onto this awning and shoot from there. And here is where the treasure chests could go for Tornado. I know this one you may have to climb up the wall to get to the high tide basket, but it'll help people understand the stage better, so it's cool. Now there is something that I really wish could have been done about this building, as it gave me a lot of problems during the Inkblot Big Run, but I highly doubt that it would be practical to change stage geometry this drastically for a Big Run. For Undertow, this is where the baskets and spawning gushers are. Now two of these are extras because I accidentally put them in the wrong place, and these ones are the ones that I'm standing on, and the one right next to the Rainmaker checkpoint. This is where the regular gushers and mud mounts are. Now, unlike the other two maps, Gushers and Munmouths will only happen on low tide. Before I talk about the cannons, I just want to say, why were there no grillers on this map, and instead of we just go up glow flies on low tide? I highly doubt this map is too narrow for the grillers, so what's the reason? Now for the cannons. Instead of having one far back and two up front, similar to Jam and Junction, there's going to be two in the back and one up front. Another special thing about this map is that the cannons will be able to happen on both high and mid tide so that the upfront cannon will be able to have a bit more breathing room on mid-tide. And for the treasure chests, I placed them here mainly because I think it would be kind of cool for the glass over thing to, you know, actually have a purpose. Now on to Umami. Obviously putting up the locations of the basket and spawning gushers was easy enough, but I struggled with deciding where to put the goldie gushers and mud mouths because of how flat this map is. I settled on putting six roughly around mid and some spots closer to spawn. Some of them might be kind of difficult to get to on mid tide as that's the only tide gushers and mud mouths will happen on. Cannons is only going to happen on high tide and it's going to be a bit cramped, but it's the only place that I could find for cannons to work. I decided to put one of the cannons up on the enemy spawn platform because you can actually climb up to it in the actual big run map because there's a wall there. Now the treasure chest for Tornado, you're going to have to travel pretty far for two of them but I think this would actually give you the opportunity to explore the low tide areas on the other side of the map. And I know the one spawning on the central platform isn't as far away as the other two, but the map is so small that I couldn't find another spot. All right, barnacle spawn gushers, baskets, normal gushers, mud mouths, you know the drill. Funny enough, barnacle is so, is so far the only maps where cannons will actually be on low tide, because low tide is near the spawn. I've decided to put the splotches at my spawn instead of the enemy spawn because it's just easier to work with since I can't get on top of the enemy spawn area. Now for Tornado. While the eggs will be going into the low tide basket, it's actually going to have to be on mid tide simply so that the water level is traversable. Don't worry, in the actual big run map there's a bridge connecting these two areas. Now that we've gone over adding all of the other special waves to big run, there isn't really much separating big run from normal salmon run anymore. Well that's what this next section is going to be all about. Okay, before we start talking about these new special waves, I want to talk about Big Run's music first. Trust me, this sort of ties into it. 
I was originally hoping, as well as a lot of other people, that there were going to be other Omega 3 remixes of other multiplayer songs, not just clickbait. Similar to the ones that you've been hearing throughout this video. Not only did we not get all of the special waves, which I was hoping each special wave would have its own song, but we didn't even get other songs for the special waves we did get. Before I actually talk about my ideas for new special waves, I want to talk about how I wanted to distribute the multiplayer music among the currently existing waves. Obviously, normal waves are going to be clickbait. That's how it works in Normal Big Run in Splatoon 3 right now. Obviously, Glowflies is going to have now or never. It just works. For Grillers, I think I would use Triple Dip, and just to let you know, I'm not going to give any reasons as to why I think it works, because it's music, and music is very subjective. For Fog, I would use Head Hammer, and for Cannons, I would use Paint Scraper. For Mothership, I would use See Me Now. For Gushers, I would use Candy Coated Rocks. For Mud Mounts, I would use Tentacle to the Metal. And finally, for Tornado, I would use Sandy Side Up. Another thing that ties into this is I was hoping Nintendo would add in all of the previous multiplayer songs from the other games, and this is how the music ties into these waves. As I was hoping, there would be a multiplayer song corresponding to a new special wave or King Salmonin. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to come up with a special wave corresponding to every single song from the past games, so I'm not going to talk about which ones correspond to what. I'm just going to list and describe my ideas for new special waves, and some of these ideas I actually got from comments on a Reddit post I made on the Splatoon subreddit. Right, first idea is called Sea Foam. This is essentially going to be very similar to Tornado, in which waves of sea foam wash up on the shore, bringing golden eggs and salmon is with them. On big run maps, this will only happen near spawn, as the asymmetric nature of it will be much more helpful for spawning and things like that. I'm unsure if I want to include boss salmonids in this or not. I'll let you be the judge of that. Another idea I have is called Baller Busting, in which lesser salmonids will be encased in the Baller Special from Splatoon 2. Now the way that this would work is that there are three sizes of ballers. There's a smaller one, which when popped, will give one golden egg and spawn nine small fries. The medium one will get five golden eggs and spawn five chums. And the large one will get ten golden eggs and spawn three cohawks. The trajectory they would follow is similar to Griller's. And I was thinking about potentially letting them explode, just like the actual special in Splatoon 2. But I feel like that may be a bit too difficult. So it's essentially just a version of Grillers, but with more types of lessers. Another idea is based on the Kraken. So you know that icon for Big Run, right? I was essentially thinking about a new type of boss salmon that would essentially function like a Kraken, where it would swim around to try to bite you. However, unlike Krakens, this boss salmon won't be invincible, and you can stun it from the front, and even damage it from the front. So just shoot at it a bunch, and it will eventually get stunned and you can kill it. However, it can one-shot you with its charged attack, just like an actual Kraken. And just like a Maz, it will be able to climb walls, both inkable and uninkable. It'll drop three golden eggs when you kill it. Now, there are two ideas I have revolving around Splatoon 1's bubbler special. The first one involves its ability to be passed on to other people, where essentially it'll be a normal wave, but there's this goldie with a bubble around it. It'll move around the map at random, going towards lessers and bosses to temporarily give them complete invincibility. However, just like invincibility with the regular bosses themselves, specials that pierce, like Tri-Strikes, Booyah Bombs, and Krakens, will be able to hit through these bubbles. They will even be able to kill this Goldie, which will drop 10 eggs, so make sure to kill it right next to the basket. Another idea is a sort of lighthouse or radio tower rising from the waters, and every certain amount of time it'll make a sound or shine a light, and for a few seconds, all the salmonids on the map will gain invincibility. Just like the previous wave I mentioned, you'll be able to pierce through this invincibility. Other than that, it's just a normal wave. Another idea for a wave I have is called Splatana Salmonid. This is essentially where all of the lesser salmonids will gain Splatanas. They will be able to have sword beams and stronger melee attacks. No boss salmonid will spawn on this. Instead, the lessers will drop one, two, or three golden eggs, depending on whether they are small fry, chum, or cohawks. Now, onto some special waves that the Reddit people gave me. The first one comes from u slash e 9601 called Swarm Fry. It's a wave consisting of small fries that now do double damage, have three and a half times more health, so 140 health, move 25% faster, and some of them will glow. And the ones that glow will drop the golden eggs. It'll be about 1 in 20. If you ignore them and try to run away, they'll slowly start to clump up into ball fries, which act similar to the octoballs from Splatoon 1, in which you can ink the path that it's rolling down to slow it down and stun it. They'll have 750 HP and deal 65.5 damage, and they are somewhere in between the speed of a chum and a cohawk. And these ball fries will drop 5 golden eggs, so you can intentionally try to have them be built up to get more golden eggs this way. Now this one isn't a new type of special wave, but a change to an existing one. U slash PC load PLA suggests adding boss salmonids to the tornado. Now, I don't exactly know how this would work, 
Would the boss salmonids drop eggs and there wouldn't be a chest? Would there still be a chest and the bosses wouldn't drop eggs? Or would it be both? Because if the boss salmonids dropped eggs, I'm pretty sure you could just wait around the basket and have them fall on top of you. And then just kill them without having to go to the shore at all. And lastly, a selection by you slash Jingle Fruit. They want to see a wave where it randomly picks two of the boss salmonids, where those are the only two boss salmonids that can spawn. Unfortunately, if one of the bosses ends up being a fly fish, big shot, or stinger, this is going to be painful. So other than these new special waves, what else can we do to make Big Run more distinct from regular Sand Run? I know exactly what to do. So unfortunately, due to some recent leaks, we now know what the last two Big Run stages are going to be both on Sturgeon and Flounder. Flounder, I feel, is gonna be kind of like a combination of Arc Polaris and Jam and Junction, and Sturgeon I have no clue. Another thing about Flounder is that considering it's on the roof of a building, the flooding is going to kill tons of people and probably destroy things. This is originally what I thought would happen during the Umami Big Run. Turns out everything was contained in a giant pit. Similar to the final Splatfest from Splatoon 2, this will be a three day long event, with each day having something different. The entire premise of this final big run is that the Salmonid invasion has gotten so bad that the federally backed Inkish military needs to get involved. I say this to help differentiate from the Squid Beak Splatoon. Day 1 will take place on a unique map made specifically for this big run that's essentially just an overrun military base. I know, I'm unoriginal. And instead of Mr. Grizz talking to you during the waves, the Inkish Prime Minister or President will talk with you. Just imagine like a jelly in a suit or something. Day 2 will be a bit more special. All of the maps from the previous big runs will be in rotation as if they were multiplayer maps, and the King Salmon will change with each rotation. I did come up with this idea when I was expecting there to be a unique King Salmon with each big run, but unfortunately that was not the case. Other than that, it's just a normal big run. Day 3 is really cool. Now that we have the backing of the Inkish military, we're able to drive the Salmonids back to their normal territory. So we'll essentially be playing Big Run on normal Salmon Run maps. And this is where those special waves come into play. Also, instead of Mr. Grizz talking to you, it'll be the members of Seaside. And they will play the standard multiplayer songs corresponding to the respective waves, or their own remixes of the normal Salmon Run songs. I haven't decided which one I want. And you know how I mentioned I originally wanted Big Run to be a win or lose situation? This Big Run would be impossible to lose as it is a 100% scripted sequence to explain how all the maps that ended up being lost end up in the normal rotation again. After the game's main life cycle ends, all the Big Runs end up being repeated indefinitely, including the final Big Run on occasion, just like how I want this to happen with the Splatfests, to hopefully tide us over till Splatoon 4. And this marks the end of this long video about my endless ramblings about Splatoon 3 Big Run. Anyways, my name is Zakatech12, and goodbye everyone.